Okay, uh, today I'm going to show you how I glaze my chattering texture ball with a Celadon glaze. Celadon glaze and then uh, I will use some wax resist to make some pattern. And then uh, after I glaze the inside and outside for the Celadon, I will put uh, wax resist and then I pour in the uh, copper red glaze. So I will have a, a red color on the inside with the pattern. And uh, for the, the uh, chattering texture, I will use the uh, under glazes. Okay, uh, and the people ask me, what is this? Okay, this is just a rubber mat. Uh, you can buy it uh, from the uh, store. It's called Daiso. Daiso, and uh, it's a rubber, so I put it here so that it doesn't uh, uh, you get a better uh, friction when I place my ball on the wheel. And also on here, I use a, a marker to draw some lines so that to give you some guidelines where to put your ball in the center. Okay, and uh, of course, if you are not good at uh, tap, tap centering, then uh, this is a very good way. Okay. Usually I use uh, tap centering, so it doesn't matter I have this little line or not. So I carefully yeah, center it. And to place on the wheel will be easier to get a, a nicer clean line. So uh, I usually put my balls back on the wheel while I'm using the uh, under glazes. And here is the under glazes I'm going to use. It's a Duncan orange color. The uh, number is CN. 052 and also the uh, the, the red one uh, the number is CN 074 okay uh, I find out this is a very good even if I fire to uh, cone 1011 the color still stays so uh, that's why I choose uh, this color Right, so first I will use the uh, red color, spin the wheel, and then, and also for using the uh, under glazes, I, I don't use it right out of the box, I put it in a, a little tray and I add water to it to dilute it, so it's kind of a watery, okay, it's not very thick. Not very thick. It's kind of like a watercolor. And while you are brushing it on, you want to use the brush that can absorb a lot of uh, 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 under glazes. You don't want to use the. Uh, I actually I use the uh, Chinese brush, okay, for uh, for doing the the uh, calligraphy. Or Chinese painting, they can absorb a lot of uh, water in the brush. So this is the uh, coat of uh, red underglaze, red underglaze. And then I wash my brush and I'm going to uh, add the uh, orange color on top of the uh, red color. And when your uh, under glaze is a little watery, it's easier for the glaze to uh, get into the deeper texture 
the uh, cheddar texture. If you, your undergrowth is too thick, then um, uh, you probably won't be uh, brushing on evenly. So this is the uh, a coat of uh, red underglaze and a coat of uh, orange underglaze. So first I brush it on and then um, I'm going to use the uh, uh, wax resist to coat it right here so when I dip it in the glaze I will have a clean cut. Okay. Okay, here I have the uh, wax resist and I'm going to brush the uh, wax resist over the uh, on top of the uh, under glazes that I just painted on. Uh, I carefully brush the uh, wax resist over the uh, underglazes and then all we needed to, wait, to do is wait till the wax completely dry and then I will do the uh, first dip. I will dip the uh, celadon glaze up here. Okay, dip it in. And then I will uh, pull some celadon on here, right inside of the foot and then uh, let it dry a bit more and then I will glaze the inside because my bowl is so thin so I don't usually glaze the inside and outside at the same time uh, if you do that, that, that uh, the bowl is not going to take enough glaze and uh, when the celadon is not thick enough it doesn't look very nice and when you have a thicker celadon it looks much better Okay, that's my theory. But uh, if you have uh, you, your piece is, is quite thick, uh, it it's really doesn't matter. You can glaze inside and outside all at the same time. But uh, uh, my piece is so thin, so uh, I usually uh, uh, glaze inside and outside separately at, at different time. Okay, uh, I've been waiting the wax uh, resist to, to dry. And uh, now the, the wax resist is dry, so I'm ready to dip the very first dip, the outside part of uh, set it down. Uh, not right now, but before I do that, uh, this set it down glaze, it's not uh, very thick, so I will I will leave it inside for uh, maybe I will say about 15 to 20 seconds because it's not very thick. And uh, because we added too much water on the celadon. Before I do that, uh, uh, I told you that I will put, pour some glaze on the inside. And this is the, uh, the uh, little uh, bubble, uh, uh, I say bubble sucker. You can suck up the, uh, the glaze and then you just pour in here, right in the middle. and. And go around, and then after you pour enough, you just let it go around and around and until you cover all the glaze. And you don't need to pour it out, that's my way of doing it. Just pour enough glaze there. So it's all covered by the glaze. And then before I dip in, I like to stir the, the glaze a bit. Because the uh, glaze is made out of uh, uh, mineral powder, chemical powders, and uh, it tends to settle down if you are not using it even for 30 seconds. So, uh, especially on the very top part, it can kind of become watery. So, if you uh, don't stir it, sometimes you don't take enough glaze. Okay, so now I'm ready to dip. Make sure you hold your, your bowl, your pot, 
uh, straight so you don't trap you trap the air inside and you don't tip over. If you tip over, the, the, it's easy that the uh, glaze is going to go inside. So hold it straight and then go in. And you can, can, you can count it like I told you about 15 seconds. Okay, so it's about time, and then I slowly pull it out. So make sure you hold your pop quite straight, okay? If you tip over, then you will have a pop, and then you go splash all over. So that's the very really, uh, important trick that uh, you want to remember. And you see that after I brush the uh, wax, and I have the uh, glaze all over and I have a very clean line because the wax resist. So this is the uh, how the inside look. Uh, you can see some of the spot that is wet. I've been brushing the uh, underglazes so a little bit wet there and also a little bit wet here. But uh, you see that the uh, satellite glaze it's not going inside because I trap the uh, air on the inside so it's just on the rim so later on I will use the knife carefully remove a little residual glitz here so that I will have a clean a better clean overlap knife there okay now uh, I have been waiting like 30 minutes actually actually I put this right next to the kiln so it's dry faster so if you have a sun outside very bright you can put it outside under the sun and uh, they will be dry enough. So for here I told you that I have a little bit of uh, glaze going inside because uh, you cannot just have a glaze right there. So I don't like to have uh, too much of an overlap here. So I try to remove the uh, glaze from the rim. So I'm going to use the, uh, uh, the uh, kidney rib to carefully scrape up the excess clay from the rim or we can use uh, this kind of material try to use that to kind of uh, sand it and I told you that the glaze is made out of powder so it should be easy to remove it if you don't want to have a glaze so now the rim is much more smoother so when I have a second set of them uh, right there it won't have a, a very clear line there now I'm ready to pour in the uh, set of them um, I told you that before you dip or you pour your glaze, make sure you mix the glaze again, even you are not using the glaze for 30 seconds. Alright, so, and uh, I told you that this glaze is um, thick, very thick, so uh, I tend to leave my salad down inside for quite a long time. like. 15 to uh, 20 seconds, but uh, if your glaze is thicker, you don't need to leave it so long, okay? It's all your experience. You have to adjust it how thick your glaze is. So I use that, carefully pour in my glaze. And let it go all the way to the rim. So you need to have a very really steady hand. Okay, I would say about 90, 95% of the cream, and then you can go around and around so the glaze cover well, and you count like to 15 seconds. And if you're worried about splash. You could have uh, 
your scoop right there to hold it as a slope and then when you pull you're gonna pull a bit faster so your glaze will not go and drip so you pull fast okay. if you don't pull fast enough then uh, you might have too much of a glaze drip over Okay, uh, after uh, waiting a couple more minutes after they dry, actually I have a kiln running so I put it in the kiln and let it dry. So uh, after I pull out, the surface, the, especially on the rim, might be rough. And uh, if you don't like the uh, roughness or the unevenness, you can uh, use a knife, just carefully you remove the uh, excess clay off the rim. Because uh, when the glaze dry, it's easy to uh, take care of it. Like I told you before, that the glaze is made out of powders. So uh, you just use a very sharp knife or even use the, uh, the uh, metal rib. You could uh, easily remove and get the surface nice and smooth. I don't worry about too much of the rim. Uh, I worried about may, I might have a line right there, but on the rim, uh, after fire, it should be uh, the rim will be smooth. I don't worry too much about it. Okay, and like I told you before, I like to draw some patterns before I pour in the uh, copper red glaze. So I'm going to use the uh, wax resist just uh, to coat it on the rim. So that when I uh, pour in the glaze and the pour out, the wax will not uh, have it on the rim. And you can brush a little bit over, maybe over on the outside. So when you pour out, maybe uh, uh, if even you have a little drip, uh, hopefully the glaze will not, the glaze will not uh, stick on the uh, outside glaze. So that's the rim I've been uh, coating with the wax and then I'm going to uh, draw some patterns. <clears throat> um, this is the wax resist so where uh, I have the wax resist resist I will not get the, uh, hopefully I will not get the uh, uh, copper red glaze stick on the wax resist patterns that I have been drawn. And uh, you want to use the uh, better wax resist and that one I use, this one I use is from uh, a store, you can buy it online, it's called Aftosa, A-F-T-O-S-A, Aftosa, I think this kind of wax is good, it resists better compared with the uh, white wax, you can see that this wax come out like a green color, it's kind of like green color, and uh, I find out it, it, it resists better than the uh, white kind of wax resist, but uh, it costs a little bit more. But when you want to have a nice, better pattern, you only use the better wax to do it. So this is the uh, pattern I just draw. Um, I will weigh uh, at least 13, uh, 15 to, uh, to 20 minutes before the wax dry. Okay, I've been waiting a uh, couple hours actually. 
uh, I'm, I'm no rush, so uh, I wait longer, so hopefully the wax will resist better. So now I'm ready to pour in the uh, copper red glaze. Um, I told you that I brush a bit of uh, wax resist over, so I'm going to pour on this side. So hopefully the uh, glaze, the uh, copper red glaze will not drip over this part. Just to feel almost to full. Then pull out fast. So this is the inside looking. It doesn't look like the uh, wax is resist well, but uh, it doesn't matter because uh, after fire, the uh, copper red is kind of a running glaze over the uh, cellar down, so the pattern will not look like this. Uh, I can show you the comparison after fire. So this is how I uh, glaze multiple glazes and uh, on my texture and also to the uh, wax resist pattern on the inside of uh, my bowl. Uh, next one I will show you the uh, different glaze. I'm going to pull the uh, uh, thermocool glaze so I will show you the result. So this bucket is the uh, thermocool glaze. So I'm going to pour in my other bowl. So I pour out the uh, glaze fast so this is the uh, look of the inside and uh, after fire, I will show you the uh, result. It will not look like this, but uh, you will see. We will see. So I will give you a comparison before and after. Uh, the, the one on the right is Temoku over Saladang, and the one on the left is Copperhead over Saladang. Um, this is the pattern before fire and I will have another shoot of uh, the uh, bowls after fire. Okay, uh, as I promised you that I will show you the result. So here comes the result. Uh, the one on the right is the Temoku over Saladang. Um, the one on the left is copper red. I told you it is copper red, but uh, actually it's more like a blue-ish uh, red. Uh, but uh, I just want to show you the result. And uh, probably the uh, uh, ingredient isn't uh, quite right, so it didn't turn out uh, as red as I expected. But uh, that's the uh, result of. Uh, uh, one glaze over the other using the wax resist to do the uh, decoration, the patterns. So 
So here, uh, let me show you the uh, detail that I did a demonstration on uh, putting the uh, under glazes red and uh, orange on the, my texture surface. And this is uh, the uh, after result. And uh, it gets uh, a little bit shinier. The, like I told you that usually the under glaze is good for 204, but uh, actually good for 2 cone 1011. So once the immature at a high temperature, it's just kind of like the uh, uh, non shiny uh, glaze. And uh, it shows very, very good result on the uh, uh, cherry texture. And also I show you that uh, I use the wax resist to coat it here and dip it in the celadon glaze. And uh, see the line is so straight and so clear, so clean here. So that's the uh, celadon glaze. And I also uh, glaze inside the celadon glaze. And then uh, I put the uh, uh, wax resist coated on the rim a little bit over and I draw the patterns the, the lines so where I have the wax resist shows the background color of my you know, set it on glaze and then I told you that I would uh, put the uh, copper red glaze over and this is a red kind of purplish red not, a, not as red but it's kind of a more purple blue but uh, it shows the pattern and I pull out the glaze and shows you before fire and now it's the after fire so this is the uh, copper red over the uh, set it on glaze and here's the uh, temoku so use the same method put in the uh, uh, on the glazes and then uh, uh, wax resist and dip it in the uh, salad and glaze um, do the same thing like I did on the uh, copper red over the salad and um, here's the result for it's kind of a metallic temoku color and um, it's very beautiful and um, this is the foot okay uh, just uh, take time to glaze it and you will uh, have a nice result uh, no rush and be patient that's the good uh, method of uh, doing a nice great glazing job okay thanks for watching